Ha szeretnél olcsóban vásárolni Rocket League itemeket vagy kreditet, akkor a legjobb megoldás erre az Eredix Change. Minden platformon elérhető és nagyon egyszerűen működik. Ha fizettél és készen áll a rendelésed, akkor kérheted is az invet, a bot pedig azonnal odaadja, amit vásároltál. Használd a leírás tetején lévő kódomat plusz 3% kedvezményért. Ha úgy gondolod nem vagy jó Rocket League-ben, akkor valószínűleg szükséged van egy kócsra. A kócsok feladata az, hogy külső szemlélőként olyan hibákat vegyenek észre, amiket alapesetben nem látnál. Viszont rengeteg kócs létezik mindenféle árkategóriában. Szóval felmerül a kérdés. Van egy különbség egy olcsó, illetve egy drága kócs között. Metafajon, ahol én is kócsolok, felkerestem Larsont, aki nagyjából 2000 forintért fog engem kócsolni, illetve Szabit, az egyik legnépszerűbb kócsot Metafajon, aki pedig 20000 forintért vállal egy óra kócsingot. Kezdésként mind a kettőknek elküldtem ugyanazt a replay-t, ahol úgy gondolom egész jól játszottam, hát ezzel is kicsit megizzasztam őket. Hogyha szeretnétek látni mind a két kócsingot teljes egészében, szinte vágatlanul, akkor lehetek csatornatagok. Általában minden hasonló videó fel fog kerülni a tagoknak egy-két héttel korábban vágatlanul, mielőtt azt kitenném mindenkinek. Na de viszont nézzük meg, hogyan elemzik ki az egyik legjobb replay-emet. So I like the instinct to try to take control in this, this position. You also have the guy on the other side, so I like the instinct to go for a fast flick. Unfortunately, it doesn't work out too well. In these positions, I always tell students, like, it's much better to just make a decision, and I think you're doing this really well. You make the decision to go immediately, which makes it so that your teammate is not necessarily confused. They don't need to lose too much of their momentum to try to respond to what you're doing. Nothing you could build now, which I recommend, is catch it towards the mid boost. You catch it at this angle, right? Yes. And you will see Nolly the whole time, meaning you can make your decision based off of what he's doing. And that's the most important thing in, or like one of the most important things in twos, especially in ones, just reading the opponent, not making a decision based on what you think the opponent's going to do, but actually reading and paying attention to what they're doing. Because you kind of had to flick this in the sky because you thought not I would challenge, right? Yeah, you yeah. didn't know he was going to challenge. That's just an assumption. Focus on the recovery, look for boost, check in with the other players, excellent, excellent. So here I'd immediately cut back out, try to get this, see if we can get a rebound going. Exactly. Very well done. Good boost deal. Nice. Always predict your teammates to miss in this rank. You know, we got a teammate pushing forward. I guess he's kind of getting bumped, so it's a little bit awkward for him. But even if this play happens, what I'm asking myself here is like, do I have time to go grab this boost in the corner? Or do I need to just grab a couple of pads on my way in? So I think I think you could have gone even wider. Your teammate should have been there way sooner. Okay, so this is more of a trust thing, right? Yeah, I really thought my teammate has this ball, so yeah. I was maybe too confident about that. Problem is, yeah, I would assume that, that he should be able to control this, right? And not lose the ball. But I know that from his flip, he's not going to be able to reach this ball. He's going to land as the ball goes over his head, I'm pretty sure. Oh, actually, no, he, what? What is he doing? Yeah, he still could have catched that. It didn't even go over his head. It's a bit awkward, but there's no one pressuring him. It's fine. Just watch the bump on his way out here. Yeah, actually, actually that's why I jumped. Yeah, because you're playing in that rank. I always tell the students, like, the higher up you go in rank, the more players are going to start looking for these demos. Yes, because it's necessary, yeah, yeah. Nice, good shot. This is rare. I see people actually, like, using their jumps in this way, so I like to see this. Where you extend the jump, hold it for, like, longer, and then time it perfectly. Like it. Good shooting. Great placement. That could not have been better. And I like that you're, like, taking your time here. The way you're, that you're approaching, one pad, you would have grabbed two pads if it was there. You grab this one. That would have been those three pads that we were looking for. Taking your time. Beautiful placement. That was excellent. Really well done. Let's look at your kickoff. Yeah, I like this. So when it comes to kickoffs, what I look for mostly, a lot of people think that speed is all that matters. And it really isn't. What matters is technique. And I think you're doing this well. You're hitting the ball in the center and you're delaying your flip until mm -hmm. you've actually hit the ball. So you're trying to be the last one to flip. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you have a little bit of boost left over. This is a great kickoff. So one thing that I would do here just to make this more efficient, right there, I would turn ball cam on because now you're already locked into this flip. You're going to get that boost regardless. You're going there. So look back behind you earlier because then you would have seen this. And then instead of taking this rotation, you might have been able to take a more aggressive line knowing that your teammate ah, won this challenge. Okay. So you see the way that you're doing this, you're kind of flying blind. Another place where it's probably smart to have ball come on just in case, in case he gets bumped by Nelly there or something and they get a quick counter. Let's say they were to get the ball here, right? A lot of times then instead you want to take the small pad route, just turn, pad, pad, Add, oh, okay. add to reach back, right? That's what you would do instead if you don't have time for this one. This is still fine, but I, I like having that information a little bit earlier because it helps make better decisions. You're looking for demos, but there's nothing in like your demo path. So I like that we're just kind of bailing on this. 
This was a bit weird with your boost usage. You used it like while you were still pointing up, so you just kind of kept yourself in the air a little bit too long, so that's a slight mechanical error. And then the same thing, I only see one person up ahead, so I'm assuming that either myself or this guy's going to get demoed. Yep, exactly. So I, I would just start looking for him. Exactly. Good. <laughs> I see, I like working with higher level players that actually understand this stuff. This is This is perfect. Good. Now, one thing that we can do to make this even better, jumping to avoid a demo. I, I know how, how cool you feel when you do this because I feel <laughs> the same way. It's just like, haha, you thought you were going to demo me and you're just like, nope, not today. But he is trying to demo you, but that's not necessarily his main intention. What he's trying to do is disrupt you. He's trying to kind of break your, your momentum and he accomplishes that by getting you to jump. So if right at this moment, your teammate had passed the ball. You can't do anything because you're airborne, but this works good. I like the wave dash. Now here's where I think you're pushing just a little bit too close. I would just like feather the gas, feather the gas, not, maybe not even use the, the wave dash, but you see how you're like constantly on the drive button here. So my thought process here is just like, I'd rather stay here and face the play because what you do is you push a little bit too far forward. You turn away from the play. And now you see like right there, that's a missed shot opportunity. Good shadowing, nice. He bolted the corner. Yeah, I feel like you could have checked your camera a lot sooner here as well. He didn't check him at all, and he comes by surprise and bumps you. Don't want this to happen. What you're going for is actually one of my favorite ones moves. So if I was playing 1v1, I love this because everybody expects you to go up like this and clear it across the net. So what I love doing is this and just cutting it back. And I see that's what you're trying to do. But we have the guy who's chasing us here. So I think a better play would have been just go here, go up and over. And that's going to actually clear it to the safe side because you got two people trailing. So if you just kind of go across like this and then transition, you've now just slurped up all the boost. This guy's going to have to run away. And this is on, this is the guy that you have to worry about because I'm prepared to bet that this hunter guy doesn't really have any boost. So he's just relying on his momentum at this point. And if you just keep going, he's just going to have to back off. This is not necessarily bad thinking. It does turn into a mistake because this guy comes in and gets the goal. Yeah. But the whole thought process behind it is not bad. And I mean, he's close enough that you can hear, but I, I often recommend like if you're in a position where you're not really like doing anything anyways so maybe like here like maybe just tap the rear view camera just kind of see what's going on because you're going here anyways i think this is a bit weird i think you're pushing a bit too aggressively here so now we're in a weird spot teammate gets a good bump but you can see the awkwardness in your movements my intention was that i have to stay close so he panics and i can take the free ball when he flicks or does something so it is a very aggressive way of thinking about it and i mean it could have worked like he could have panicked here and tossed the ball away you could have turned around and driven away with the ball that absolutely could have happened but like after this when when that plan didn't work out you had a plan a but i don't it looks like you you didn't have a plan b because you got here and now you're just like well crap my plan didn't work out and now you're just kind of like driving in circles and hesitating and then it becomes kind of weird and this is something oh, yeah. that actually yeah. happens <laughs> this happens a lot when whenever you get put in a position where you start feeling uncomfortable and i can i can tell by the way that you're moving that this position confused you in the moment what happens psychologically is basically like i know i made a mistake now i have to make up for it so your brain just goes into like go 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 mode so you're just like i'm gonna go okay so when i saw my teammate is giving away the ball i didn't know what to do at that point because it right. was a 2v1 so if you're yeah like if your teammate had taken possession and it was now dribbling that's excellent play to make so if if you don't know what you're supposed to be doing you probably shouldn't be trying to force something and the right play is probably just to bail give your teammate some breathing room yeah probably that uh, would have been the better decision yeah another panic touch from your teammates that actually ends up being a goal. <laughs> yeah, here you just want to let him do his thing, not jump up for it really. Yeah, he kind of just banged it uselessly. I don't know how that worked. But here, for example, if you feel like this touch right there, because I don't think this is a good touch, right? Maybe if you like tap it up and then do a musty or something really high on the backboard. So right here, you can take your time here, even dropping it down to the ground or just like taking even more time. Cool, make sure we got the boost. And again, like while you're flipping, I would check the rear view camera. I want to know what this guy did. Is he following me looking for a demo? Is he? tunneling for this boost for some reason did he grab that boost is he just leaving down the middle like i want to know how much boost he has and what he's capable of doing because yeah you still haven't seen him now you see that he's way over here mm -hmm. and if you had had that information earlier like now we know cool this is a 1v1 very good and then i try to get this from him doesn't work that's okay i see teammates probably gonna go for this so i'd actually consider just like, grabbing a few pads and maybe staying aggressive here yeah i like this and then this is also smart because you notice there's no point in you being yes. aggressive. So it's it's the right instinct. You're like, okay, teammates not there. We need to pressure. I will pressure. Cool. I'm here pressuring, but there's no one 
like they're so far away they're doing nothing this guy's driving away this is perfect like your your general game sense and understanding for the game here is perfect then you look back and it's like my teammate has a better hit unfortunately i think he got a little bit confused and he wasn't really on the same page i think maybe he thought that you were going so that's why he didn't take that opportunity but i really like the way that you're thinking through this sometimes here it can be better not to flip just to try to keep it closer so here you can just take like a softer touch to the corner so that you're not hitting it towards this guy and this is kind of the same thing like I I think what, like one of the best pieces of advice I ever got was you don't need to always hold the drive button down. Mm -hmm. So in, in this position, like you're supersonic, just pushing straight towards like you don't need to be super fast here. Like this guy's out of the play. Like he's a completely non-factor. You guys are in this really good 2v2 or 2v1 situation. I would just start feathering the gas on my way in here. Don't rush it because you see like you're getting a bit too close again. And then you have that little turnaround. I would much rather just have you continuing to face the play get very proactive and very aggressive with your positioning so that when stuff like this happens it's not this like here here it's just i'm going or i'm leaving and being very decisive with what you're going yes. for i mean you can always go for the fake too if that's an option but i think this is probably that's like the third one that you've dodged that's one thing that i think you can actually focus on a little bit more on the offensive end is finding more chances because the only difference between you and like you said you're like 1800 or something like the only difference between you and like a 2k player is 2k players yes they might play a little bit faster a little bit more consistently than you but the biggest thing is they just see more chances they get more opportunities to do things You have good shooting, I'll give you that. It's a good save from them as well. Demo. Oh no. Yeah, he just tapped it out to them even though so much time. Yeah, can't really control what your team is gonna do. Nice shot. Could have potentially taken their boost on the way out. Like immediately after this shot, my first instinct is grab this and leave. But you see now we're in a weird spot. We have no boost. Great demo even on low boost. But we're transitioning in the same path that our teammate wants to play forward. So it becomes kind of awkward. I think if you had just kind of snagged their boost in the corner and then left, it would have made this whole thing a whole lot nicer. And quite genuinely, I think you guys wouldn't have gotten scored on if that was the play that you made. Yeah, because he goes and he grabs that. Now he's on 100. If you had grabbed it, then this pad would be gone. This pad would be gone. He'd be forced to transition on small pads. He wouldn't be there at this time. I don't actually know why I didn't, didn't uh, take that boost. Maybe because I, I saw that he actually saved it as, and it... Uh... And then you're like worried that you need to get back faster. Yeah, maybe. So if this was a 1v1, I would 100% support that. But because it's a 2v2 and you know that you have, like, you know, you can't see your teammate up ahead of you, I would just trust my teammate in that position and just make sure this guy can't transition because he probably used most of his boost making that play. So I think just adding a little bit more like general awareness because you have great game sense but i want you to just start looking around and paying attention to what's actually happening and i think the rear view camera is a good step that you can add just to help yourself look for these chances and opportunities and just get the information that you need great pass i'd go on this i guess teammates going for it i'm kind of surprised that they gave you guys all this space to work with but hey we take it good shot too you have really good shot placement i have to say where you're aiming and where you're shooting i think is fantastic so what is the replay lemzések őszintén én több mindent is bevágtam volna Larsontól, de az igazság hogy nem nagyon mondott többet nagyjából 15 perc alatt átfutott a replay-en ettől függetlenül nem mondott rossz dolgokat viszont minden csak nagyon felületesen érintett Sabi pedig pont az ellenkezője volt ő nagyjából 45 percig elemezte a replay-emet és nagyon részletesen elmagyarázott mindent annyira hogy megszólalni se volt időm mellette észrevető sokkal tapasztaltabb volt, mint Larson. Ettől függetlenül az árukhoz képest mindketten jól teljesítettek. Hogyha érdekel tőlük coaching, akkor a linkjük ott lesz a leírásban. Ha pedig a teljes coaching érdekelne, akkor azt csatornatokként le tudjátok csekkolni. Iratkozzatok fel, ha még nem lennétek. Találkozunk legközelebb. Sziasztok!